What's up, YouTube? It's Nathan, and I'm coming at you with another Queen of the Forest Uberlab Farmer. This time it's not a Pathfinder, though. It is a Trickster using Righteous Fire. It runs at about 325% movement speed with a permanent onslaught buff thanks to the Death Rush Ring. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail here. I wanted to show you guys what the gameplay looked like before I filled your ears with tons of information on what makes this character work. So I'm going to let you guys watch the run, and I'll see you in about three or three and a half minutes from now. Alright guys, now that you've seen what the character looks like in action, it's time to cover what it actually is. Uh, I'll start off with saying it's a level 90 trickster in the Softcore Abyss League. Right now I'm scaling Evasion Rating to cap the Queen of the Forest. Um, and here are my ascendancy nodes. Shade Form being one of the biggest ones, giving me flat evasion to help me cap at 45k. It's also Mind Over Matter to help juice up my EHP. So... 
I'm not going to talk about the skill tree just yet. I'll cover that last, but I will say, again, it's the Queen of the Forest character in the five link that I have here. It's just phase run. You don't need a five link. You can just do a four link. Actually, you could do a three link if you really wanted. This is a level four enhanced that I leveled up on my own, so it cost me nothing. You could use a level three. You could use a level two, but the quality here buffs up the movement speed gain on phase run. So that's what I've got. Phase run, faster casting, increased duration, efficacy, and enhance. Like I said, if you're on the four link, you take out efficacy because all it really does is increases the skill effect duration by a very small amount. And you're not going to notice that, and I'll tell you why. I'm running Poacher's Mark on this character for when I run through zones to help me generate more flask charges and frenzy charges. Now, frenzy charges are important with phase run because they are consumed when you put phase run up and this increases the duration it says at the bottom right here consume frenzy charges to increase duration boom just like i said so it says right it says the buff lasts 3.42 seconds but when you consume a frenzy charge this will when you consume up to three frenzy charges actually it'll go up to like nine or ten seconds total which is big 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 so that's nice um free flask charge generation you can toggle it on and off whenever you want it's not a big deal so moving on, let's talk about how I get 45,000 evasion to actually cap out this bad boy. Let me tell you, it ain't easy, but I barely make it. I barely make it. I've invested quite a bit into actually getting to this point. Now, stick with me because we're going to go around the world here when it comes to gearing up and, and, and evasion, like how I get it all. Uh, I'll cover the flasks first because that's the easiest. The Witchfire Brew, it kind of double dips effectiveness here. It's a defensive flask and an offensive flask. It provides us an ability, uh, it provides us the ability to blind anything within the area, decreasing their accuracy and reducing our chance to get hit. It also increases our evasion. It gives us increased damage over time and a free curse. So this flask is wicked effective for this character, uh, especially with Queen of the Forest on. It's beautiful. It also lasts a pretty long time too, so that's even better. Next up is the Jade Flask of Reflexes. This is pretty important because if you do not have a high roll here, you might not make the 45k evasion cap. And you can see I'm barely above it with a 98% roll, so keep that in mind. Uh, next up, the gear. I get a lot of evasion from gear on the gloves. I crafted these with an Essence of Delirium myself because there really wasn't anything available on the League. It's not the highest amount of evasion, but it's good enough. It's got some life regen and cold res to cap out. And as you can see here, I'm barely getting by with resistances. So yeah, um, the belt. This is why I'm barely getting by with resistances right here. This is the reason. I crafted this belt myself. I've been kind of passing it throughout all my characters. It's not the best belt ever, but it's pretty good. It gives me some life, uh, but more importantly, 15% movement speed and increased flask charges used. This thing is beautiful. Inside of this, I've got evasion, life, and two movement speed lines, which uh, maybe not the best, but it uh, gets me by. Uh, if I didn't have that evasion jewel, um, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I keep it because it's kind of a nice jewel. All right, moving on. The boots. 738 evasion here. I mean, you don't have a Jailbishi build without Ed Series stuff, man. These things are beautiful. Uh, let's say you didn't want to run at series step. Guess what you could do? You could do the three-step assault. These things are almost as good. I, pff, they're lacking 5% movement speed. They're pretty much as good in any other situation. And since the character basically has permanent onslaught thanks to Death Rush, you're always going to have the 100% increased evasion rating uh, buff from these boots. And that is global evasion rating. I'm pretty sure. In any case, what I do know is that it gives about 3,000 to 4,000 increased evasion over the Etsy series step in my situation. Um, so if you're having trouble capping, toss the boots on. They're beautiful. Uh, I forgot to mention the gem set up in the gloves here. It's the Righteous Fire. So it's Righteous Fire, Conk Effect, Ellie Focus, and Burning Damage Support. Uh, so those are beautiful. And in the boots, I have Stone Golem, Increased Crits, Arcane Surge and Orb of Storms. This setup is going to be proccing our Elemental Overload and Elemental Equilibrium for huge damage buffs. It's pretty beautiful. Moving on, I mentioned the Death Ring, um, Death Rush Ring briefly. Uh, 
because I have Righteous Fire on all the time in Uber Lab, I'm always killing stuff. Righteous Fire absolutely destroys everything in a level 75 zone as well, so that's beautiful. The Chaos Res isn't really important. The accuracy is not that bad. The armor's okay. It's just a good ring. It really is. The amulet, um... Now, this amulet is pretty good in my opinion. It gives a huge amount of life. In fact, it's 114 life because of all the juicy strength on here. It gives me a bit of evasion rating to help me cap. Like I said, it is tough, so anywhere you can get evasion, you're going to want it. Um, and it gives mana and mana regen, which is beautiful because that's what I need most right now. I can sustain Righteous Fire on my life, but the mana slowly dwindles, which isn't that big of a deal because as long as I kill something with the Patient Reaper, my recovery rate skyrockets. Not a problem at all. Also, with Arcane Surge... Um, it slowly regenerates, but I'm not going to count that because I don't frequently um, track that when I'm running. So the other ring I'm using is the Cataclysm Gyre. This thing is a monster when it comes to capping resistances. Uh, it doesn't even have life on it, so keep that in mind. It's not that big of a deal to have huge amounts of life here. The damage requirement and the survivability you need in Uber Lab is quite low. Because like I said, it's a level 75 zone. The content's kind of outdated, I gotta admit. Um, so yeah, I just use this ring to cap uh, resistances and evasion. Okay, and finally... Not finally, but we're closing in on the last pieces of gear here. I bought this Devotos with the Purity of Fire Mana Reservation Enchant for about 25, 30 chaos or so. And it's nice because it gives you a huge amount of dexterity. Look what happens when I take off this helmet. Oh, I can't do anything. So what I do is uh, I slap this bad boy on for increased movement speed and um, the dexterity. That's really it. It also gives a huge amount of flat evasion to help cap out um, Queen of the Forest. So it's nice. It's good. Um, the last two items I have are nice because it's the Rise of the Phoenix. If you've played Righteous Fire, I don't need to say anymore. This shield is its literally what you have to use. right? So I just bought the one with high life and high... Um, life regen to help me sustain. Inside this, I just have a quick little shield charge set up for uh, fortify and increased duration. I'm not worried about faster attacks because I pretty much only shield charge on the boss. In the helmet, I'm running my aura setup, which is clarity, blasphemy, poacher's mark, and purity of fire. Like I briefly mentioned, I toggle uh, poacher's mark on and off depending on what I'm doing. If I'm killing Izaro, I toggle it off to increase my EHP and make sure that I use uh, the Despair Curse over Poacher's Mark. So, if you didn't know, when you equip a Blasphemy Curse, it will override your Despair. So, keep that in mind. Use Poacher's Mark only when you're running through zones and need the extra Flask Charges and Frenzy Charge Generation. So finally, the Balefire. This is the piece of gear that allows my character um, to actually run this juicy phase run setup. So I get a huge level 25 Scorching Ray skill linked with Ellie Focus, Burning Damage, and Swift Affliction. I think these are the best gems. I don't know. They work, though. This thing does, like, almost 300k DPS in the, in the right situation against Azaro. Um, it's nice. And on top of that, you get uh, Life Recovery on Kill and Mana Recovery on Kill. And as I've said, this character does kill quite frequently when I'm running. And I, I, I don't need to stop, either. I can just run through some mobs and boom. I'm getting juiced up by some life and mana on kill. It's beautiful. I'll briefly show the weapon swap, even though it's not that important. Um, I don't have an ability to traverse the Y-axis on this setup, so I, I decided to use a weapon swap for a quick little leap slam in case I get stuck anywhere. I just have to weapon swap them and I'll leap over it. Now, it's not even that slow to begin with without investing hardly anything into attack speed, so... That's what I do. Again, it's faster attacks, leap slam, and fortify. So that's the gear. Um, that's kind of like half of the evasion capping debacle right there. Just the gear alone. Now, the other half is this. The skill tree. Um, yeah, I'm playing a trickster, man. This is amazing. So the trickster gets some natural evasion scaling through its ascendancy here. Um... I decided to come up to shade form even though this does decrease your overall life and mana regeneration um, it provides you with the ability to cap out your queen and it gives you 20% more chance to evade attacks so I 
barely get hit. I really, really barely get hit. I can face tank Gazaro. If he hits me, it's not the end of the world. I have not died to him yet through all the runs that I've done. If you want to, you can even manually dodge the attack. You don't have to. You can seriously face tank him. Just remember to keep the flasks active and keep up fortify if that's what you do decide. So back to the evasion scaling. I've got the three nodes here for just a bit. Just a bit of evasion. Um, there's not a whole lot you can actually get on the tree, which is a big problem. So what I've done to circumvent that issue is I took the flask effect nodes, which really, really, really help out because it increases how much evasion you get from your Stib Knight and Jade Flask. So without the Alchemist wheel, uh, the character wouldn't really be possible. Now, um, the jewels are also just as important because all of my jewels have evasion rating on them except for one, and I'll get to that in a sec. Uh, I wanted to go for evasion in life. If I could get a third stat that increases damage, beautiful. But if not, no big deal. I paid anywhere between 5 and 15 chaos for jewels. I didn't want to pay too much. I wanted to keep this character relatively affordable. Uh, this jewel, on the other hand, is something that I found myself and I decided to slap it in there. It's wicked. I love it. Uh, I don't know how much that would actually cost if you decided to buy it, but it's really, really strong. Again, uh, this jewel, evasion, life, damage over time, and you're going to see a trend here. Uh, evasion, life, damage over time if possible, or resistances where I need it. So, uh, without the combination of all these jewels, I maybe wouldn't make it to the evasion cap. So, it's pretty important to get well-rolled jewels here. Uh, okay, so that's that's how I cap evasion. I know it took a while to get through that topic and all the gear, but it's important. If you don't cap evasion, it's really not worth it to run Queen of the Forest in the first place. So moving on to the, uh, the rest of the skill tree, I just take life, some damage over time, and regen. Actually, a lot of regen, mind over matter. I, I briefly covered the Ellie overload and Ellie equilibrium that procs with the Orb of Storms to increase our damage by a crap ton. Um, other than that, just stack life and regen you don't need a whole lot of damage but what you do need is a whole lot of regen okay so that's the skill tree that's the character i don't think i forgot anything except for the stone boy i didn't have him out the whole time um yeah that's it that's the character uh for bandits i took two passives i don't really know what else to say at this point i pretty much covered everything i need to so yeah, I guess I'll uh, I'll stop talking.